Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Cancer with Dr. Denise Ejo, CEO of Comod Cancer Foundation in partnership with Plus TV Africa. I want to thank you all for joining us again today. I hope you I hope you have been enjoying yourself. And as we look forward, or we are in our electoral season, we look forward to God's grace upon each and every one of us. So let's talk about it. What is our title today? It's Childhood Cancers, the Journey and Support of a Lived Experience. Um, this month was is, is International Childhood Cancer. International Cancer, Childhood Cancer Day was celebrated on the 15th of February 2023. It's a global collaborative campaign to raise awareness about childhood cancers and to express support for children and adolescents with cancer, the survivors and their families. Also, the day raises awareness for and honors all children and families experiencing the effects of the disease. It acknowledges the, their pain, their difficulties, giving them space to process and grieve. In the house today, I've got a very, I've got actually two people. Let's see if our second guest can join us. But as we start, we've got our special guest, Dr. <laughs> oh, well, I got the top. Dr. Monet Kanwobi. She is an advocate for childhood cancers and has continually worked with them. Well, we have to remember that let's close the gap in cancer care to cure all children with cancer. I said it again, to cure all children with cancers. That's what we're going to be talking about. So let's look at what we've got. Dr. Wobi is a seasoned and committed healthcare professional with extensive experience leading public sector on childhood cancer awareness, treatment and care of children, cancer warriors. Oh, Doc. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for this afternoon. Thank you for your time. Dr. Wobi believes that every child should have the benefit of the best possible treatment at as little to no cost as possible. And she's passionately engaged in promotion of healthy lifestyle notification. Doc, I want to say thank you for joining us this afternoon. Thank, thank you for your time. Uh, today we're going to have a nice chat. I, I know how much work you've been doing with children and unfortunately our survivor may not be able to connect with us. But then I know you can always talk us through the process because you've worked and lived with them and understand the challenges that they face. So let's look at it and I'm going to ask you some questions. Are you ready for me now? Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's look at it. Um, First and foremost, from your experience of working and supporting children with cancers, can you talk us through your work, um, your your work that you have been doing, and what impact you you would share with us? Would say has been made has made a difference. Uh, okay, um, I've started working with the kids who have cancer since twenty um old old graduate twenty thousand two thousand and three. You know, and um, that's almost like uh, 20 years this year. But even before then, you know, having the passion to work with children and then seeing that most of these children, their parents had no idea that children can have cancer. Even now, we still have an operator trying to convince parents that children too can have cancer. You know, so that that's actually how we started, trying to... Um, Great awareness and then raise funds for children who whose parents cannot afford um, the treatments. That's basically how we started. Hmm, that's a good one. Okay, so bearing in mind now, you see, one of the things we have to be very factual is that one of the things I always try to do is let us try and be honest with each other and be honest with the populace about this. Can you briefly tell us? Um, what you would say would be an average lived experience from your support work of a cancer patient. So how do they, you see, I live with the disease, so I know what it is like from an adult perspective. Um, I don't really have an idea, and I'm very, I always say to people, don't ever say you understand something if you have not sat in that chair. 
but you can at least give an idea of what you, from your work experience with them, what you would say is their lived experience. The fear of every parent is, you know, not being able to do anything for your child. And of course, the word cancer is something that frightens everybody. Cancer in adult frightens everybody. Now, talking about cancer in one's child is something that is unfathomable. You, you can't even begin to think about having a child that has cancer. And then when you don't have the means to actually care for the child the way the child should be cared for, that you know, also brings up another part of trauma or problem or challenge for the parents. Now, for the children, because most of them are, are too young to understand what is going on, and some of them are old enough, I mean, a child of, uh, let's say, seven, eight, nine, ten, and above would know that there is something amiss, there is something wrong, you know, um, because, of course, we've seen, or usually, the, the parents, are, the, the, the mothers, are always crying, you know, and the child would perceive that it is because of me that mommy is always sad and always um, crying. As a matter of fact, um, I had a child, he was uh, seven, and the child was so, you know, he was internalizing things, wasn't able to, to speak, to talk about what he was going through. Basically because he feels that if he talks about how he's feeling or what he was going through, the mother will become more upset, you know. So trying to get them out of that mood, to be able to speak out, because really, I believe that being able to talk about what one is going through would actually help give that person you know, some help, you know. And we don't have that much of um, psychological um, treatment for our children and their families because when cancer affects a child, it actually affects every member of that family, you know. So I, I was talking with this boy and it was like that he's waiting for his own turn for him to pass on. I, I was quite shocked and I was like, why would this do such a thing? He said, ah, doctor, see, this person on this bed has passed. The other person on the other bed has passed. I'm wondering when it will be my turn. And I can't talk to mommy about it because it would upset her even more, you know? And then you talk about the financial burden that, you know, this brings on families. It's not, it's a huge challenge. Because it is not a one-off treatment. It's something that, that you know, one go for treatment. The minimum you know, period of time that one takes the treatment is slightly less than a year. And the maximum is almost like a year. But even when one achieves cure, one still needs to maintain, one still needs to come up for follow-up. So it's almost like a lifetime thing. You can't just um, achieve cure and then dust your boots and say, okay, that's it, I'm going, I'm not going to come back for checkup and things like that. So that trauma is always like the, the psychological trauma, the financial trauma. And then one of the things that we see is that some of these parents, after treatment, lose their jobs because, you know, one person has to stay in the, in the hospital with the child. Most of the um, uh, caregivers at the end of treatment or within the treatment are asked to stop work because they are spending more time out of work than at work. You know, so these are some of the challenges that we face. And of course, sometimes even getting the medications is not as easy as one would um, would expect. Oncology drugs are called orphan drugs because they are not as um, as um, common as other drugs like, let's say, paracetamol or anti-malaria um, treatment uh, drugs. So mm -hmm. that's basically 
some of the things that 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 that's, uh, some of the challenges that we face. Thank you, Doc. Um, wow, you know, because I live with the disease, I can identify with ex everything you've just said. And it's very heartbreaking because, yeah, where do the parents come from? What, what are the children thinking? You know, maybe because I'm a teacher, I've already got, I'm quite sad because children are the heritage of the Lord. That's my own view. And, and for a child to already accept such in a very early stage of their life is uh, it's very heartbreaking for me. So, okay, so based on what you've just said, now you've just identified some challenges that um, um, cancer patients or their families go through with this. Okay, now you own a cancer foundation for children. And why did you, what was your particular interest? Why was it important to you, you know, when, when you listen to what the children have to say, um, I'm sure you will have sleepless nights sometimes. But why, why did you decide to go down this road? Um, well, actually, um, while doing residency and boots, I met a couple of children, but the one that actually decided this for me was um, a boy. He was two years, nine months, and um, I was just entering into the joint emergency um, room and the, the father had got him, you know, because according to the father, he had the uh, malaria, he's been having malaria, you know, and after taking a history, I was like, okay, fine, yes, we'll investigate for malaria, but we'll also like to investigate for leukemia. And the man was still very upset. He was... He was really angry. I was like, how can you say leukemia? Is leukemia not um, a type of cancer? And I'm like, yes, it is. But how can you say a child is not even up to three years and, and, and you're saying leukemia? And, um, well, long story short, the child was investigated and actually had leukemia, you know? And... I and this boy became very good friends. And after the first treatment, or after the first um, admission, he went home and didn't come back until the day before he passed. Because I had gotten close to the family, I actually went to their house. And the father was like, look, we have sold everything we have for that first admission. We don't have money for this, and he's not our only child. We have other children, we have rent to pay, food, transportation, clothing, and other things. All the money we have had is have been spent on this one child. I'm taking him to church, and so he took him to church and um, was giving him a particular steroid. And the boy was getting big, and as far as they were concerned, the child was okay. And I didn't see them again until the day before he passed. You know, so it was very um, heartbreaking for me because I knew that, you know, given a chance, he came in early. Given a chance, he, he could have survived. You know, so we I, I went around, spoke to some friends of mine, and we um, we actually ready to pay for the admission. Subsequent admission, but the parents were like, you know, they don't have any of that. And so that was actually how this, you know the foundation was started. You know, and of course, the other children, one of them came from Sierra Leone, and then um, because they couldn't pay the fees, they were in the world each time, you know, a new treatment starts. After the, the treatment, they can't go home because they've not their own. The hospital, you know, and that was very, very saddening for the mother. The mother would sit down and weep, you know, um, going on the internet to find out if there were any charities that could help their matter. We didn't see any. And so that was how we started. Wow. Okay. Let me just say this because, you know, me, I'm, I like to tell people the truth. Me, this is what, this is my lived experience. I really want to appreciate you for doing this. Um, more because I know what what you're talking about and I know the pain that we all go through. Um wow, 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 wow. Okay. 
Um, let's take a break now, everyone, and then we'll be back. You know, um, one of the things I've always found is that when you listen to the ex lived experiences of a, a, a of a cancer patient, it gives us all an understanding of what is going on in the minds and hearts of people that go through this disease. Doctor. Mm -hmm. Neka, thank you, thank you. Just hold on a minute. Let's take a quick break and then we'll be back, everyone, to continue this conversation on the, the, the childhood cancers and their life, lived experiences. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, for um, coming back on. We are discussing the lived experiences of a childhood of childhood cancer. This month is World Cancer Childhood Cancers, uh, International Childhood Cancers Month. So I will continue our conversation with Dr. Neka Mwobi, who is an advocate and runs her own cancer charity. So before I even go very far, Doc, please, can you tell us the name of your NGO? Children Living with Cancer Foundation. Thank you. Please, I hope you heard what she said. She said, children living with cancer foundation. People like me will tell you what it means. Living with cancer is not an easy experience. I am deemed as an adult living with cancer. Thank you very much, Doc, for actually your work. Let's continue this conversation. So what are your views on the support process and guidance um, required to help um, help families? What would be your support? What would be your, what would be your views? Because you can't, you, can't, you can't solve everybody's problem. Um, I, I think basically... You know, Nigeria is a very, very funny place. Um, some parents don't even want family members to know that their children or their child have cancer. So they are missing out on the family support that they could have, you know. And then, unfortunately, again, we we'll have some adults that don't want to hear anything about childhood cancers. It's not my question. I read it in Jesus' name and all that. So such adults who've been to schools, you know, uh, because we feel that the adults weren't hearing us, so we took our message to schools to try to teach them. They will now take it home. Some schools were very receptive, especially schools run by foreigners, unfortunately. Um, some schools were like, you know, we don't want our children to be um, burdened by the fact that these children have cancer and that they will die. You know, that, that their children may be affected psychologically. And they weren't going to have us come to, to the school to tell the signs and symptoms of childhood cancers. Now, we need family support. There is not plenty um, palliative care for children who have cancer in Nigeria, because I don't think there's much palliative care centers in Nigeria. We are just starting in that direction, you know, to build up palliative care um, systems and all that, you know, putting it into the system that is already existing in, in Nigeria. So we need all that because definitely some of these children come in very late and really and truly there's nothing that one can do. When I say palliative care, I mean from the beginning. It doesn't mean that that the child will die, no. But to help, you know, from the word go, helping the parents to understand what it is all about. We also need to even teach the healthcare givers um, how to break this news. The reference because it's not a news that you can just break like that, and you have to be certain of what you're talking about before you label it the child, you know, as having cancer. The support that we need is not a little thing, it's something that is quite large. We need the support of the healthcare system. We need the support of the educational system, the financial institution, the government. You know, the government have to have the political will to recognize that children too can have cancer and start putting in, in place um, steps that, you know, would 
that, that would help not just the children, but also their family. Because like I said before, the families are quite affected. The parents, the siblings, the grandparents, their friends, everybody's afraid of what will happen with this child. You know, so the support that, that the support system, you know, is I think larger than what an adult would need, you know, because the whole system needs to work in place. All we are looking at is this particular child. This child should have the best care. This child should have the best treatment. This child should have the best of everything to make the child have the best chance at survival. You know? Thank you. Um, you know, I've told you now, you've already hit me big time. So, you know, this is um, childhood cancer um, period or the period for this month. Yeah. And we actually have the um, World Childhood Cancers Month in September. Um, however, we also, we have to recognize the closing the care gap for the cancer the cancer children the cancer children. Um, for this reason, I want to if we look at the mortality rate in Nigeria. It's a lot. Yeah. When ordinary cancers, just everyday cancers, before we add on the challenges with children. And no matter how we say it, religion is not my portion, money. Uh, one of the things I will accept is that globally, the money issue is fixed. I think it's a global issue. It's a global concern um, from based on my research now. You see, when you are in something, you start to know what's going on. If given a blank sheet of paper, and I ask you now, give me three requests that you want the government to look at. This is a period of change. We're, we're in a period where in our electoral changing system. And you want them to say, look, we are still here. This is my campaign, right? What would yeah. you say? Can you give me for three? And, I, and when I say three, I say for a patient, for the advocates, and for the medics. Because those are the um, three group of people that we work with. I, I, I think basically, for the patients, I know that elsewhere the um, the treatment for children are either subsidized or taken care of by the government. So I ask that the government do same for our children. I'm not talking about the type of um, subsidy or you know saying that treatment is free, but then there is nothing that is in the pharmacy, you know, because we have instances where they say that the treatments for children are free. But when you get to the pharmacy, you request for this drug is not there. And that makes it so hard because parents will now have to buy out of pocket even gloves, syringes that is needed for these children's care. The government must have the political will to help these children. Yes, it's not um, something that, 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 that affecting adults. And because it's not affecting adults. It seems as if the children are, are forgotten. As a matter of fact, I went for a, a conference, um, a cancer conference, and a lady got up and was like, yes, this, this is about breast cancer. And because we love our men, let's talk about prostate cancers. And I was like, okay, so how about the children? You know, I've been to um, a government um, interview, talk about childhood cancers, and they were like, ah, okay. The money that they will use to treat 5,000 children with malaria or diarrhea disease is what do they need for one child that has cancer. My Oga then was like, these people don't understand that that one child is as important as the 5,000. And it is because it is not their child that they are you know, talking that way. Now, the healthcare um, uh, system have we are a great people. We have so much knowledge here. We are still going, you know, out and doing training and retraining to make sure that we give our children the best. To encourage doctors, nurses, nutritionists, you know, to have more and more training and retraining. And then um, at the grassroots level, primary healthcare systems to teach the healthcare workers there the signs and symptoms, so that once they see anything that looks like 
it may not be, but it looks like they should have a bell ringing in their head and refer that child as soon as possible so that that child can have the best possible care, even if it is childhood cancer, you know? So these are, are things that, that, that I would want us to see. And then, of course, the, um, the parents, like I said before, let them have job security, even at the end of their treatment. One of the things that we are looking at is to have these jobs made in Nigeria so that the expense of having to import the drugs will be removed, you know, getting quality health um, medicines made in Nigeria would give us a better chance of survival too. Uh, Dr. Neka, I want to say a very big thank you to you. Um, I think this conversation is going to be something we will hopefully continue. We've still got um, World Cancer World Childhood Cancer Month in September, and maybe yes. we will take it a bit more. Maybe we will have to work towards making that a time to really bring this back into the limelight because, oh gosh, I can't even talk about that because, you know, I live with the disease. I want to say, let's thank you, Doc, for joining us this afternoon. Thank you for your time. Thank, thank you for you. just sharing with us, you know, just a small bit that you shared. I think a lot of parents will actually be very sad to realize that is this what this is all about you know when you take things for granted and we don't know we appreciate the management of plus tv africa for sponsoring this cancer awareness in nigeria and to all our viewers we thank you for sharing the cancer episodes and um, uh, all our programs because the more we talk about it the, the more people get to understand knowledge is very powerful i don't i don't think a lot of people realize that together we fight together we win you can join us on Comod Cancer Foundation Instagram page. What's our? I think we have a WhatsApp group. It's called Cancer Awareness. That's what, I think it's called Cancer Awareness. Anyway, we have a WhatsApp group. Um, our Facebook. Just check us. YouTube has all the videos, so this video will go on immediately after. Um, at the end of this, in the next few days, you should see it on for you to actually share it with other people and let people get to be more aware. Doctor, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. You can't imagine, you just educated me. See, this is one of the things I like about this. You all educate me. So thank you all for joining us this afternoon, this morning, this evening, this, wherever you are in the world. Thank you, and thank you, um, Plus TV.